Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. going to be long. I know we have communion also and plus we're going to do some other things. Uh, so I just wanted to have a time of fellowship. So, But there is a word that I want to share with us this morning coming from the book of Genesis chapter 25. And I only want to lift up one verse out of what Reverend Cupperson read. Genesis chapter 25 verse 26. He said, then the other twin was born with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So they named him Jacob. Esau was 60 years old when the twins were born. Amen. I want to share this morning from the subject of what are you grabbing for? What are you grabbing for? Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this time that we are now sharing in your presence and in your word. I ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit continue to lead and guide and direct. And Father, we thank you now that as your Holy Spirit hovers with us, God, that you would use us for your will and for your glory. I ask, God, that you would come and anoint me afresh, O oh God. Come now, God, in all of your glory. Fill me with the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And I thank you, God, that you would now open our ears and help us to listen. Open our eyes, for we want to see Jesus. And then open our hearts that we might receive him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost, amen. What are you grabbing for? There's no greater motivation or no motivating force than desire. Desire can move you. Desire can motivate you. Desire can sustain you until the moment you achieve or receive that which you have been desiring. There is a motivational speech by a gentleman named Eric Thomas called How Bad Do You Want It? He talks about an older gentleman that, that has a, is a financial guru. And a younger man comes to him and he says, I want to know what you know so that I can be successful in life. So the older man told him, meet me tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. at the beach. So he shows up at 4 a.m. at the beach in his suit. And the man begins to tell him to walk out into the water. He said, I thought we were coming here to discuss how to be successful. He said, if you're serious, then you'll walk out into the water. So the man walked out into the water until he was about waist deep. And, and as he walked out into the water, the man says, now come out a little further. He walked out until it was about shoulder height. And he says, I thought we were here to talk about being successful. I didn't come for a swimming lesson. He said, he turned around and he began to walk back and the man said, I thought you wanted to know what the secret to success was. So he said, if you're serious, come back in the water and walk out a little further. As he walks out this time, the man grabs his head and pushes him underneath the water. And he holds him down there and as he struggles to get up, he's struggling and he's struggling. And just before he passes out, the man raises him up out of the water. And he said, what did you want the most? The man said, I wanted to breathe. And he said, that's the key to success. Whatever you want, you gotta want it bad enough the same way that you wanted that breath when I had you under that water. When we are talking about going through life and the things that we want out of life, the question we have to ask ourselves is, how bad do we want it? How bad do we want success? How bad do we want that thing that we say we've been longing for and we've been searching for? How bad do we want it? The biblical narrative that's before us today is a struggle about struggle. Yes, it's about desire and struggle. We see a picture of a struggle between two brothers for a blessing. The struggle moves from womb all the way to life's drama that we see now presented before us. One brother had desired the blessing while the other brother despised the blessing. And the number one thing in the whole text is the blessing that God has given to this family. See, if it desires to keep the younger brother from getting the blessing and the younger brother desires to get the blessing, we should ask ourselves some questions. What do we desire? What am I passionate about? And I'm in a position to get it. And am I willing to keep grabbing until I get it? The first thing that I want us to see and to understand out of our text is this. We gotta recognize the struggle of desire. 
when you look at the text in 22 and 23, Rebecca had two, na two nations warring on the inside of her. She had two nations fighting in her womb. And as she too had these two nations fighting in her womb, and as they began to come forth, it says that Jacob was grabbing the heel of Esau as they came out of the womb. But if you know the text before this, it said that God had ordained for the younger to be ruler over the older. So Jacob was just grabbing after what was his in the first place. He was grabbing after the thing that he desired. And you can see that the struggle started in the womb. Jacob was designed a blessing from the moment he got conceived in his mother's womb. But that inward struggle. How many of us have an inward struggle for something in life? How many of us have something pressing on the inside of us, driving us, wanting us to go after the thing that we say we want? Maybe you want a new job, but is there an inner desire driving you toward that new job? Maybe you say you want a new home. Is there an inner drive driving you toward that new home? Whatever it is, is there an inner drive inside of you driving you to that thing that you desire the most? You see, in that voice, it talks about the voice of success. Yes, that voice of strong success is when that voice begins to speak to us. And we start to hear that voice telling us, you got to go after this thing. you got to stay up tonight. you got to work a little harder. you got to dig a little deeper. That voice is telling us that we've got to keep going and not give up. But the question is, is the voice to keep succeeding stronger than the voice of giving up? Sometimes we hear that little voice that says, you ought to give up, you ought to throw in the towel. But there's another voice that says, keep fighting, keep struggling, keep reaching, keep grabbing. Are we going to follow that voice or the voice that says, give up and throw in the towel? Do we desire a success that God wants us to have? I don't know if you ever knew or understood or not, but the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, I know the plans that I have toward you, the thoughts that I have toward you of good and not of evil, to give you good and not harm, to give you a future and a hope. The 13th verse shows us, though, that it's a conditional promise. It said, if you look for me with your whole heart, you will find me. God is simply saying, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Are you willing to search for me? Are you willing to keep knocking on the door for me? Are you willing to keep coming? How bad do you want it? And in Deuteronomy 28, 13, it said, if you listen to these commands of the Lord, your God, that I'm giving you today, if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make the head the head and not the tail. He will always put you on top and never on the bottom. You can be on top and walk in victory. How bad do you want it? The question we've got to ask ourselves today is how bad do I want it? Can I hear that voice of struggle on the inside of me saying this thing is yours if you keep fighting. This thing is yours if you keep striving. This thing is yours if you want it. How bad do you want it? The next thing that we want to understand is this. Are you in position to grab? Esau came first, but Jacob was grabbing Esau's heel. Yes, the text tells us in 24 through 26 that Esau came out of his mother's womb first. But it says when he was coming out, Jacob had him by the heel, trying to pull him back into the womb so that he could come out first. And in case you don't know about the Hebrew culture, whoever the firstborn was was the one who got the blessing. Whoever the firstborn was, was the one who got the showing up blessing because you got two thirds of the family's inheritance. And Esau was destined to come out first, but Jacob was grabbing him by the heel, grabbing him, trying to pull him back so that he could get the blessing. Being second is not always a bad thing. I know some of us want to come in first in everything we do. We desire to be first in everything we do, but understand this, being second is not a bad thing. These come from behind victories are more thrilling when you're in second place. When you're out front and you're running out front, there's nothing thrilling about that. You just won the race. But what about those races when you see somebody coming from behind? When you see them behind in the fight, when you see them behind in the race, and then you begin to see them begin to move forward, you begin to see the tide turn, and you begin to see them coming out on top. When you begin to see them cross the finish line first, when they were in second place, it's something about seeing that moment that excites us. It's something about seeing that moment that stirs something on the inside of us. I don't know about you, but I've been watching some track races, and, and when you see the person that was in second or third place begin 
began to overtake the first place runner. It's something that starts to make you stand up on the inside and it make you stand up on the outside and you began to cheer for them and say, go, 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 until they come out victorious. Yes, but think about you in that position. You might be in second place right now, but, but that just means there's motivation. That means that there's somebody in front of you that's running, and you know you got to dig a little deeper to catch them. You know you got to dig a little deeper to overtake them, and you got that drive, you got that desire that's pushing you. And if that drive and the desire is pushing you hard enough, you might find yourself overtaking them and coming out on top because that's where God wants you to be in the first place. God wants us to be successful. God wants us to be the head and not the tail. God wants Wants us on top, but we got to ask ourselves a question. How bad do you want it? What are you grabbing for? Begin to search your heart and your mind right now and ask yourself, what am I grabbing for in life? And how bad do I want it? Am I willing to do what's necessary to get what I want out of life? See, being in second gives us that goal to strive for first place because everybody can't run from the front. You see, some of us get out front and, and we might be overtaken because there's nothing out front that's pushing us because there's nobody ahead of us. But when in second place and you're seeing that there's somebody in front of you, that goal might be right there in front of you and that's what keeps you moving. That's what keeps you driving because the goal is right there in front of you. And the closer you get, the more desire you ought to have because the desire ought to grow stronger every time you see your goal getting closer. You might be right there. The desire is growing and it pushes you forward because you can see your goal right there in front of you. You may want to go to college and your goal is right there in front of you. There ought to be a voice pushing you and driving you to move forward. You may want to be a better person in life, but there's a goal in you that says, I've got to keep striving and pushing and moving forward in life. You may be an athlete, but you got to put the work in so that you can come out on top. You got to keep pushing and striving so that you can come out ahead and not behind. But the next time you're around a baby, I want you to watch that baby. It's a great illustration of what it means to grab for to see and put yourself in position to grab. You ever see a baby when the baby wants something? It, it began to position itself to get what it wants. It may be something over there on the floor. It'll begin to crawl across the floor and position itself to reach out and grab what they want. Oh, y'all ain't getting with me today. Just watch a baby and as that baby begins to move around the room and they'll see something or that baby may see someone. They'll begin to position themselves, even if they're in the arms of another, they'll begin to position themselves to reach out and grab somebody else. Somebody need that right there. Yeah, yeah and sometimes you may be in the arms of another, but something inside of you is telling you, you got to grab for something else. You may be in the arms of the devil right now, but he's telling you, God said, you got to reach out and grab for me. You got to reach out and grab for a different life. You got to reach out and grab for holiness. You got to reach out and grab for righteousness. You got to reach out and grab for other things than what you've been grabbing for because God wants you on top and not the bottom. Yes. And when we think about, again, that little baby and how they're positioning themselves to get what they want. And the last thing that I want us to see and understand is, are we still grabbing? There may be some things in life that we've been grabbing for and we've been grabbing for a while. We've been grabbing maybe for years. We've been grabbing maybe for decades. But we haven't achieved it yet. My question to you, are you still grabbing? Are you still reaching out for the thing that you've been grabbing for? Never lose sight of the blessing. Never lose sight of what you set your eyes on. Never lose sight of what you set your heart on. Never lose sight of it. No matter how much time passes, never lose sight of what you set yourself to do. Every day, he saw Esau. He had his eyes set on that blessing. Every day he saw Esau, he had his eyes set and said, he's got what I want. Every day he saw Esau, it reminded him that Esau had the blessing, but he wanted that blessing bad. He wanted it so bad that he was willing to wait. And he kept waiting every day, anticipating the moment that he could get that blessing. What do you have in your life that keeps you driving and burning? What do you have in your life? Is it a picture that you have that keeps you moving forward? Is it a quote that you keep in your mind and in your heart that keeps you moving forward? Is there a person that keeps you moving forward? Whatever it may be, don't lose sight of it, but hold on to that thing that's driving you. Hold on to that thing that's pushing you forward. And then you got to make the most of your opportunities. Don't let an opportunity slip by. When you got an opportunity, 
to grab hold of the thing that you've been desiring. When you got an opportunity to grab hold of the thing that you wanted the most, grab it. Don't let it go, but grab it. And if you notice the text, it said that Jacob waited for his moment. It said Jacob waited and he waited and he waited. Years had passed by from the womb, Jacob has been desiring this blessing. From the womb, Jacob's been wanting what he God had in store for him. From the womb, Jacob has been wanting this thing. But now Jacob finds himself one day in the house with Esau. And Esau declares that he's so hungry that he's about to die. Jacob said, that's my moment. Jacob took advantage of the moment. He took the opportunity that was before him. And Jacob said, sell me your birthright. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Jacob said, this is my moment. This is my time to get what I've been longing for. This is my moment. Have you seen your moment yet? Is your moment before you yet? Or is it yet to come? If your moment hasn't come yet, I say keep grabbing. Yeah. But if your moment is in front of you, reach out and grab it. Reach out and take hold of it. If your moment is in front of you, grab it and don't let go. But hold on to it and take what God has blessed you with. Hold on to it and take what God has in store for you. The opportunity is there, but you got to make sure that you go after it. And don't just go after anything, but go after that which God has ordained. Go after that which God has blessed you with. Go after that which God has declared will be a blessing unto you. Jacob has been grabbing and grabbing ever since birth, but now he finds himself in the midst of being able to get what he wants. I want us to understand today, what are you grabbing for? Is there something in your life that you haven't gotten yet, but you've been grabbing for some time now? Don't stop grabbing, but keep grabbing for it. Keep positioning yourself to get what you're looking for. Keep positioning yourself. Maybe you got to reposition yourself to go after what you want. Maybe you got to go back to school to go after what you want. Maybe you got to get a better job to go after what you want. Maybe you got to pray harder to go after what you want. Maybe you have to spend some sleepless nights to go after what you want. Whatever you got to do, make sure that you're grabbing with all that you have. Make sure that the desire in you is still burning. Make sure the desire in you is still growing that you might move forward and grab what God has for you. When God has something in store for us and we're willing to go and get it, nothing can stop you. If the desire is strong enough in you, nothing can stop you. And if God's got it for you and you're willing to go after it, nothing can stand in your way. But the question is, how bad do you want it? Maybe there's someone here today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I'm going to ask you a question. How bad do you want God? How bad do you want Him? Are you willing to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Are you willing to accept God? Are you willing to acknowledge you're a sinner and that you're willing to repent of your sin and come into a relationship with Jesus Christ? Is there anyone who wants it today? Is there anyone who wants God today? Is there anyone who wants to receive salvation today? Amen. Amen. My sister here. Is there another? Is there another? My brother here. Is there two? I'm going to ask if you two would come. 